This lesson is going to be on alternative and renewable energy sources. The main types that we're going to talk about are wind, hydro, solar, geothermal, and biomass. Wind power once was used for mechanical drives only. It's gaining in popularity as a clean alternative source of electricity using turbine generators. You know, the old um, windmills, as they were called, were used on farms to draw water up uh, from aquifers to serve as wells on their land. And uh, way, way back, they actually did things like uh, ground flour and corn and those types of things. Um, today, we have large wind farms are being built across the country where wind becomes a natural resource. Uh, some of the concerns with these, obviously noise pollution in the area for the residents of that area, and there have been numerous reported uh, deaths to uh, flocks of birds flying in those areas. And as you can see, the picture on the left there just shows what are some 750 uh, kilowatt turbines in the state of Minnesota on a large wind farm there. Hydropower, uh, basically using water uh, force as, uh, as energy. Traditionally, it had been used to... Um, churn uh, mills. That's why we would have those um, water mills and uh, again they did several things with those from a mechanical energy standpoint. But today we have hydroelectric generators. We have uh, most predominantly hydroelectric dams but we also have what are known as tidal powered turbines. Now these are actually utilizing the uh, current flows uh, generally in and out of, uh, of a river or in and out of some type of an inlet um, they use these in the North Sea uh, off of Scotland. Uh, there's an experimental one in the East River in New York City as well. And again, there are um, uh, subsurface turbines that actually spin as the current goes in one direction or another, and those drive a generator which produces the electricity. Solar energy has been around for quite some time. Um, the interest in it and the expansion of it really began with the oil embargo of 1973 and 1974 and then the second embargo in 1979 caused even more uh, interest in it. Uh, the idea is to collect heat and energy from the sun and use it for things uh, such as pure heating, uh, generation of steam for electric turbines, or to actually create electricity directly which be, would be the use of photovoltaic cells. Um, in a lot of cases it's used to you know, heat water uh, even for space heating. And we generally have two types. The passive solar uh, energy is using the direct heat of the sun. There are solar collectors and they can uh, direct the heat in a particular area. Um, it's primarily used for space and water heating and it can also used, uh, be used to create steam. So some of the panels you might see on office buildings or uh, residences may, do, may be doing nothing more than circulating water through for hot water heating. Um, others, uh, I mean, you would probably recognize the difference, uh, are the photo, photovoltaic ones that are producing power. And again, this, gets, this brings us to the active part. Uh, it's the photovoltaic conversion of sunlight to electricity using semiconductive materials. Okay, it's dependent on the atmospheric condition and the Earth's uh, position relative to the sun. And obviously off to the right there you see a photovoltaic array, um, small scale uh, use here. But you see them more and more throughout. Um, they're using them now for traffic signs, um, communication systems uh, for instance pipeline companies or um, any type of long distance uh, lines or cables or whatever else. Signals um, are transmitted and the power is coming from photovoltaic cells. Geothermal energy. We generally think of geothermal energy as, as natural steam, you know, coming from geysers and from other places. And in those cases, it could be used for direct space heating. It can also be used directly for industrial processes. Um, steam will also drive uh, steam turbines uh, at a power plant or on site somewhere where there is the geothermal steam coming up. But a flip side of that, which a lot of people are not necessarily aware of, is the fact that you also have geothermal energy that's used for space cooling. You know, after all, if you go several feet below the surface, the, um, the soil and the temperatures down there are much cooler than above ground. And so you can literally drill down into cooler area and draw up cool air to use for um, space cooling. This is becoming more and more um, prevalent. Um, I have personally seen uh, large homes that use this as well as um, 
oh, mid-size uh, office buildings. Biomass, these are the various types when we talk about biomass and energy coming from biomass. Uh, we're talking about things like wood, uh, garbage, uh, crops, um, various alcohol fruits. So in other words, fruits that can produce some type of an alcohol that can be burned as energy. And then landfill gas. Biomass, uh, the one form here, is landfill gas. You basically, you have decaying trash uh, that's in landfills and it's going to create methane. Um, you know, all the biological material that breaks down and decays will end up giving off methane, methane gas. And over time, the older landfills will actually have pockets of methane within them. And there are, um, you know, people who will go out and they literally will poke a hole down into the landfill and they will get the pockets of natural gas and they'll use it on site mostly. They can use it to drive um, some small turbines or small generators to create uh, power on site. In some cases they may have a process whereby they need uh, to um, create some steam and so they use the natural gas for that as well. Another form of biomass is to actually uh, take solid waste and convert it to energy or trash to energy. This is where using solid waste that would normally go to a landfill, you're using it as a fuel to create heat via combustion and in turn create steam uh, from the boilers uh, where the combustion is taking place. Uh, the steam can actually be sold for industrial purposes uh, or generation or the generation of electricity can be um, accomplished by using the steam as well. Now there's a company in Fairfield, New Jersey by the name of Cogentrix Corp and they actually build and operate several of these uh, trash to energy or solid waste to energy facilities around the United States. Wood and wood waste, uh, these are normally the byproducts from large uh, you know, uh, wood mills and, and paper mills. And what they'll do is, again, to be efficient and to be um, environmentally conscious, they'll go ahead and use the wood or the wood waste, the wood pulp. They can actually burn it and then it becomes a heat source where they can create their own steam that they'll use in the process, uh, say for instance, for making um, particle board or even paper. They can also use the heat source to run uh, small generators on site for their own um, consumption and operations. Uh, the Weyerhaeuser company, uh, a huge manufacturer of various forms of, of lumber and wood and um, uh, particle board, and those types of things uh, does this on location with um, a couple of their very large facilities they have in southeast Oklahoma. And most of us are more familiar with this type of biomass. We're, we're making fuel from things like crops, grasses, and biodegradable matter. One of the more uh, well-known ones, of course, is making ethanol that we use uh, as an additive to gasoline in our cars. And the primary uh, food source there is corn, but there's also um, sugars that can be broken down into uh, alcohol, as well as uh, certain types of grasses. And on the biodiesel front, uh, we could use vegetable oil, peanut oil, soybean oil, and then recycled grease from restaurants once it's, it's cleaned. Um, you can burn any of these in an existing uh, diesel-powered vehicle.